Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be the Iraq War. There's been a lot of stuff in the media over the past 10 years about the war in Afghanistan, the war in Iraq, and a lot of things have, have happened from the start till where we are today that the average person doesn't know these things. You know, I've personally, I got a friend that was blown up in Iraq in 2006. He lost an eye, spent a year and a half in Walter Reed recovering from his injuries. He's got a traumatic brain injury, and it's been very difficult for him trying to get back to work and, and just getting into regular society. And so, I mean, you've got one group that's like, you know, Bush is the B Bush Hitler, as they call them. And then, you know, now you got Obama in office and everybody's complaining that, you know, he didn't do the things that he said he was going to do. And so it's, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle the politicians are on. It's like they're all arguing and disagreeing. And basically, what do I think happened in the Iraq War? I mean, I've got a lot of friends that were there that were involved in it, that were on the ground. When I want to know what's going on, I'm certainly not going to turn turn on a one of the major networks and listen to some jackass that's reading a teleprompter in an air-conditioned studio in New York or somewhere else in the country. I mean, I'm going to read the blogs and I'm going to watch the YouTube videos and I'm going to read the blogs of the experts like Dr. Dave Kilcullen, who were General Petraeus's experts. You know, he was the world's foremost expert on counterinsurgency. I'm going to read what he has to say about it. I'm going to read the blogs of the guys that are on the front lines. They're actually there sitting down with the shakes and, and breaking bread with people when they were trying to, to turn things around and was looking at the war. I mean, if, if you look at what Dr. Kilcullen said, who was Do General Petraeus, is one of his top advisors on counterinsurgency and, and helping turn the tide of the Iraq war, he said he believed the war was a mistake. It shouldn't have happened. I mean, it's obvious that the weapons, at least the amount of them, they weren't there. And after the war, when they interrogated Saddam and everybody else, it's, where were the weapons of mass destruction? Well, obviously they destroyed them. Saddam was posturing and presenting himself because he was worried about the Iranians and uprisings in his own country. So he wanted people to think that he still had these things. He and his inner circle all thought that our intelligence services were good enough to the point where we knew that they for sure that they didn't have anything but the way he acted when the inspectors were in there he acted as if he had something to hide and that was really for his enemies because he was convinced that our CIA and our our different intelligence agencies would be able to figure out that he didn't actually have this stuff and later when it came to when military action was imminent he and his advisors were just convinced that the Americans, we knew that, that they didn't have the weapons, but we were just coming in to take over. That's, that's what he believed. And he miscalculated. And when I look at Bush, there's been a lot of people like, ah, oh, they invented the intelligence and blah, blah, blah. I believe that all these guys saw what they wanted to see. They looked at Saddam and, you know, let's face it, the guy and his sons, they, they were not fucking choir boys. I mean, these guys were... I mean, they didn't call him the butcher of Baghdad for no reason. I mean, when, when Uday and Kusei's sons were little boys, you know, f three, four, five years old, they used to take him down and watch him torturing people, cutting off limbs, ripping off, ripping out eyes, throwing them into bats of acid while they made the family of that person or prisoner watch as his body was slowly dissolved and burned to death. I mean, these, these were very cruel, inhumane people. And... The world, I believe, is a better better off place without them. Now, did the war need to happen and all that shit need to happen? I mean, obviously, our the whole reason for going to war was the weapons of mass destruction. Well, of course, they weren't there. And it just shows you how inept our intelligence agencies were. And one of the key guys that, 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 for, that was supposedly one of the, the people that turned, right, that was one of the, I should say, double agents for Saddam, he knew they didn't didn't have these weapons, but he lied to the Americans that were his contacts in the CIA. Why? Because he hated Saddam, and he wanted to get rid of him, and he was willing to do whatever it takes. If that meant in creating intelligence and things out of thin air, to like the biological weapons la laboratories, he was the guy that was responsible for all that stuff. He made it all up. He was f totally full of crap, and he was doing it because he wanted to get rid of Saddam. He didn't care about the consequences. 
And so when you got a government like Bush and all of his his advisors, all these warmongers and and hawks, talking in his ear, and you know these guys saw what they wanted to see, and you know they lied to themselves about the intelligence that it was better than it actually was. And so we all know that the shit wasn't there, and our reasons for war were were suspect. You know that doesn't mean the right thing would have been to hey, there's no weapons, so let's just you know pack our shit up and go home. I mean, the big mistake that was made in the war was when Rumsfeld put Bremer in charge and, and Bremer fired all of the military and all of the police forces. I mean, just like that. You had General Franks who was telling everybody, hey, we're going to be out here in six months, and he was winding everything down. And and the guy that was in there before Bremer, I can't remember his name. He was only in there for a few weeks, but he was looking. He's like, hey, you know, the Iraqis, I mean, they're lynching and killing the bad guys in the streets, and so... You know, it's like an eye for an eye justice now that all the the main bad guys were, were gone. So he, he didn't see there being a problem. And so they were all working with the Iraqi police and the Iraqi military that was still existing. And they were, you know, they were the, the corrupt ones were getting assassinated and killed and, and arrested. And, and, you know, the really bad ones were, were being put away. And so then Bremer goes and fires all these guys. Now you got no security, and it's like like instantly overnight you got four hundred thousand insurgents. When you consider all the police and the guys who were in the military, I mean now they're out of work. They don't have any way to feed their families, and now they're not going to be allowed to participate in any way in Iraqi society. And that was a huge fuck up, and that was what caused the insurgency, and that was when it exploded. And so basically, you had Al Qaeda came in, and they got together in a Sunni triangle with all these different sheikhs that later turned against al-Qaeda and became what was known as the Anbar Awakening or the Anbar Awakening Council and basically what happened is, is that once these guys brought these al-Qaeda guys in and sided with them these guys you, know, you gotta remember that bef right before the war Saddam released everybody from prison all the rapists, child molesters, murderers, thieves the only people he didn't release were people that were spies for Israel and spies for the United States, and so there weren't a lot of a lot of people left in the jail system. And he did that by intent because he knew the only way that he could stay in power was to try to have some kind of insurgency. So Al Qaeda comes in, and hey, you know we're your Arab brothers. We're going to protect you. We're going to help you kick the Americans out. And basically, as soon as Al Qaeda got got their foot in the door, they just basically took over and said, hey, we're in charge now. If you don't like it, we'll you know we'll just kill you. And that's what happened, and 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 they did that to a lot of these sheikhs that that later you know sat there in, in meetings. I read the stories, I read the the blogs about the guys that were there as these these sheikhs came in and they were fucking bawling their eyes out and they're like, we brought these guys into our communities and we thought they were good and they were honorable and they were honorable Muslims and all they did they killed my brother, they raped my wife, they murdered my sister, and and they were just. Their families and their communities were devastated. And were like, and we, our, our, the Americans just said, just let us know where the guys are. We'll, we'll kill them or capture them. Just let us know where they are. We'll get rid of them. And then when they turned against them, and they rolled, you know, they, that's when they got Zarqawi and, and dropped a bomb, a 500-pounder right in him, and, and took him out, who was the leader of al-Qaeda in Iraq. And, and General Petraeus, basically what they did is they had all the troops living in the communities and basically protecting the communities. They, in essence, became the police force and trained locals, guys that were, had blood on their hands of, of Americans. We, we basically sided and trained these guys, and, and then they turned the war around using counterinsurgency. And unfortunately, all this stuff didn't need to happen, but it did. And... You know, my father fought in Vietnam, my uncle fought in Vietnam, my uncle was one of two guys that came back from his unit. Everybody else was either dead or too severely wounded to get put back into combat. And, you know, they fought in a war that went nowhere, and they saw what happened after the politicians pulled out all the support. I mean, Saigon fell within 12 months, and I think everybody's seen the pictures of that last Huey helicopter taken off from the American embassy when Saigon was falling. And, but bottom line is, is that we're there, things got turned around, and it's still a, a clusterfuck. It's still a mess, but it's a fledgling democracy. And, you know, is it going to be successful? Uh, you know, we're not going to know for, I think, probably a couple decades. But 
the Iraqis have a chance and what I think is most promising and most beautiful about what happening is is the war turned around not so much because of all of the efforts of the Americans and their allies, it was because the Iraqis stood up for themselves and they stood up against evil and looked it right in the eye and said, there's no fucking way. And our American troops and our allies just said, we just want to help you guys get a stable society so we can get the fuck out of here and go back home. And that's what we're slowly doing and I believe this time around, we got to do the right thing. That's the way to handle it. It's like you don't just up and, and abandon people that have put their lives in the line when you said, hey, we're going to be here no matter what. And they say, okay, because well, if you guys up and leave, my family and everybody's going to get killed. And so you got to do the right thing. And that was, you know, we didn't do that in Vietnam. And, you know, the bottom line is if you break it, you fucking buy it. You know, it's like we went in there and, yeah, the intelligence was wrong. We did the wrong thing. And, the war should have never happened to begin with, but we're there, and the war is winding down, and it's starting to wind down in Afghanistan, and 10 to 20 years from now, let the historians sort it out, but just pulling up and leaving was, was never the right thing to do. I encourage you to read Michael Yon's blog or read some of his books. This guy is amazing. He wrote Danger Close, the Michael Yon story. This guy's a former Green Beret. It's one of the most amazing books I've ever read. And, you know, I trust people like this that have been, he was a Green Beret for several years, and he's over there with our troops. Even today, he's in Afghanistan right now, writing books about it, Moment of Truth in Iraq. You want to read about the Anbar Awakening and all that stuff that happened and why it turned around and how it turned around? This book will really change the way you look at things. It's not a gung-ho, yeah, hey, we're glad we're there. It's just, you know, we're trying to make the... Our guys are trying to make the best of a bad situation. We had piss poor fucking leadership during the war. And so that's what happened. So if you find these messages of value, please go to the PayPal donate button and donate any amount that you think is equal to the value that you received from this video. Or at the very least, please share it with any of your friends and family by clicking one of the Facebook or social share buttons. And if you've got a question that you'd like me to answer in one of these future video coaching newsletters, it can be about life, it can be about relationships, problem with your chick, problem with your husband, a business issue, whatever it happens to be. If you need help, put it down in an email, put it in the Facebook comments, or you can shoot me an email.